Dean of Fatu's Take. Uh, today we will bring you an interview right here. So um, we're going to be on for the next hour. Uh, we would like to thank you all for joining us and for always being there when we start this program. Uh, like I said, when we uh, launched this program, that it is going to be uh, a program that we will bring you every um, twice a week. It's going to be twice a week, every Monday and uh, Friday. That's what we're going to be doing for now until later after the COVID-19 quarantine and you know how the self, uh, the uh, uh, distancing and all of that is. So after all of that, uh, we will try to see after the social distancing and all of that, we'll try to see if this is something that we can continue. But for right now, this program is going to be twice a week and we'll be talking about issues that are the burning issues in the country. And uh, today, of course, if you go on social media, uh, most of what you see is the talk about the amount uh, committed by the Ministry of Finance to address the COVID-19 health pandemic. So we're going to be talking about that issue here today. I have guests who will be joining us shortly. I think you can even see one of them. Uh, and there's another person who's going to be joining us from Gambia. Uh, so we can talk about this issue. And uh, as I'm sure most of you know Malik. Malik was with us during the uh, during the struggle to remove Jame. Uh, Malik is Seattle-based, a former VU host and activist on financial prudence. Uh, he uh, used to be the expert on all the issues when we talk about finance during the struggle, but then he disappeared uh, because I guess uh, there's no struggle at the moment. Uh, but he is here today. I had to get him from his hiding and said, today you need to come and help us with this. I've actually contacted the uh, the government official in the Gambia to see if they can also join us. But uh, today the person's schedule is really, really tight. Uh, so he asked that we reschedule his appearance and then he will join us later uh, so we can uh, talk more on the issue. So uh, Madi Jobate too should be joining us. We are waiting on him, but you know how it is like to be connected on from the Gambia. But if he cannot uh, be connected, we would call him on WhatsApp. But let's give him a little bit of time and see how that goes. Uh, M, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Fabu. Thank you for having me. Well, you've been hiding for far too long. Um, yeah, I think life has caught up with me. Um, <laughs> um yeah kids once they get to two two and a half years old they become a handful um and so other it, things that the came in who, is the baby who's keeping you away it's the baby it's work it's life and all the other things that go with it and you know looking at gambia it's just one of those where you don't know where to start um with all the issues that are going on all the problems that are going on i had really high hopes for gambia when um gambia was removed in 2016 and a new government came in. We all assumed, and I thought at that time, you know, there's no need to 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 worry about these guys. We can we can give them time. We can look at what they do. But very quickly, it was apparent that um, the guys were not up to no good, and therefore we didn't need to give them the time. So most of what I do is try and look at talking to people on the ground and speaking to people, getting feedback and all that stuff. That is what I do. I don't participate too much on social media anymore, but I do reach out to people on the, Gamb in the ground to see what is happening. And also, we are setting up a business in Gambia. We already, I think, um, we've already started it. We're mm -hmm. doing a poultry and a farming business right now, which is taking some of our time. So, Oh, that's good. And how is that going? Uh, well, we've already delivered, um, I think we already have 1,000 layers and we received another 1,000 broilers. So those should be ready by the end of the, by the end of, um, by the, by the end of next week to early um, June. Wow, that, that's great. Congratulations on setting that up. Uh, while we wait for Madi Jobate to be here, because I saw his write-up uh, on this whole issue, and that is the amount committed by the Minister of Finance to address the COVID-19 health pandemic. Uh, but before we go, that while we wait on him, I saw today in uh, on the news review, uh, market women who were complaining that uh, the market is usually closed very early and that they are asked to vacate the market. And now they're saying, oh, no, some of them even went to the extent of saying they don't even believe there is corona. And they were like, why are they sending us away? And I'm going to give my take right here, and then I'm going to ask you yours. Uh, my take here is 
I think what the government needed to do there was to first sensitize the people. Because the reason why the women at the market saying, oh, no, they, maybe there's no even Corona, but they want us to stay away from, uh, from our, our small businesses. And they said this is where they make money. And they said the stuff that they were selling is where they make money so they can go and repay. So in, what I think is that the people needed to be sensitized first. The government should come out and talk to the people about Corona. But everything that we've been seeing in the media about Corona in the Gambia mostly it's about use a hand sanitizer and uh, cover your cough and that kind of thing. So I think, in my opinion, I think the sensitization should have come first. Let these people know this, this pandemic and this coronavirus is very serious. Let the people know first. And from a financial point of view, what do you think? Well, the, 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 the first and foremost, those women don't wake up at 6 a.m. to go to the, to the market or 3 a.m. in the morning to go to the market as a joke. They go there because they need to earn a living to feed their families. Now, if the government decides that there is a big pandemic, we all know it is a pandemic, there is a problem. What do you do? Um, you've come on, come ahead, gone, gone on to do the, um, to create the restrictions. Now, as part of designing and creating those restrictions, nobody in cabinet or in any of the ministries that were responsible thought of how do we help the ladies and women who, sh who, who, who who work at the markets how do you help people who are in the info on in who are in the informal sector because a significant proportion of people who are in this formal sector they get paid by the month so chances are it will not affect them as much but the people whose livelihoods depends on them going out to the market at 3 a.m 4 a.m in the morning and making a living out of that nobody thought of how to help them should part of this 500 million not have been put aside to help those people in those markets so that you can control how many times, how many hours they are in the market for, and what amount of um, people you can uh, allow to go into the market at any given time by subsidizing the incomes of these people. So there are two things. You either die out of Corona or you die out of hunger and people would choose to go out and find money to feed their families than sit at home and die of hunger. So it's just lack of thinking and lack of planning on the part of the government. Whenever things happen like this, the Gambia government, first thing they do is let's think of how much money we need. Let's gather all the money. But then they have no plans on how they would strategically spend that money to impact the lives of people. So all you see is money being spent frivolously for the sake of spending. So you are saying that the market women that we heard today complaining on TV uh, that, uh, you know, they they don't have enough time to be at the market to sell their stuff. You're saying a budget should have been put aside for them. Yeah, there should have been help for them. There should have been help for them because the, bigger, the, 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 the biggest impact will fall on people who are their living on a daily basis people who have to leave their homes to be able to eat. There are other people in the country, they work civil servants, they are paid by the, they are paid on a monthly basis. They will all get paid. Um, people in the parastatals and some of these other institutions, they will get paid. But the market women, the petty traders, the, the, the tradesmen in the street, because if we're to fight and control the disease, it's the people who spend most of the time in the street mm -hmm. that we need to deal with, okay? um the hotel workers the the taxi driver the the market trader the faraba um the welder man those are the people that interact with the most people on a daily basis and if you cannot keep those people at home for financial reasons they are going to infect the whole population because you only need one faraba in the market to catch coronavirus for most of the market to catch it because at some point everybody will interact with that faraba yeah at some point, somebody will interact with the market yeah, later. It looks like so, social distancing is virtually dead over there. Like you see people all together, and until now they're saying, we do not believe there is even coronavirus. So we hope that the, uh, if the ministry is listening or someone close to them would uh, talk to them about uh, doing more sensitization, especially at the market. They can yeah. have, uh, what do they call them, road shows or get people to talk to, talk to them because the Ministry of Health do have a communication team. I spoke with them before. I met with them before in Gambia. So I think that would be very important if they can do that. Uh, just to say that uh, I am here with... Uh, 
uh, with Malik Jai and Madi Jobata should be joining us soon. You know, in Gambia, it's like almost iftar time. We just had the iftar. Uh, we're going to talk about today uh, the uh, amount committed by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs to address the COVID-19 health pandemic. I've seen this on social media and Malik already, there's a lot of wow about this issue. Like everyone, mm -hmm. how is it going to be possible? But somebody told me something today and that person said, you know, Fatu, maybe they're right, but maybe they didn't do it right. They didn't, the breakdown wasn't enough. There was no explanation because sometimes if you throw these things out there like that, then it brings more questions and answers. So now uh, looking at this overall, um, before we go to, uh, the, in, to, to the, uh, the, the amounts, what do you think overall of the whole amount, the 500 million, that's what we're talking about, part of which they said 660 million given to health? Just like I said before, um, whenever there is a crisis in Gambia, they mobilize funds first. They don't strategize. They don't plan. They don't think. It's let's get money. Money will solve everything. And unless you strategically apply that money into different things that have been well thought out, it's going to be a waste of money. So what did they do? They sat on their hands for days and not do anything about the corona until it became a problem in social on social media. Everybody was talking about it. There was no quarantine. There was nothing. Flights coming in and out. And all of a sudden the Gambia government jumped into action. So nothing was planned, nothing was strategic. So once they jump into action, they shut down the airspace. They, they, they decided they would quarantine people. So now we need to figure out where we'll get the money from. And Taman Burinjai, what does he do best? Viament. That's what he does. And environment is not a fraud. Nice... Let's talk about the environment part later, because they're saying it's not a fraud. It's, it's fine. It's, it's not... not well it's not fraud but then the thing is environment is just a nice way of, it's, a, it's a it's a technical term for, for transfers transferring money from one account to another account for another different purpose that's what it is um, yeah. it's nothing fancy it's just a fancy way a word but now unless you plan and strategize and every year or every year in the gambia they make budgets but nobody make contingencies in the budgets contingencies emergencies will always happen the unforeseen will always happen. So you always have to have a small amount to put aside for, mm -hmm. for something if it happens um, that was not foreseen. If you don't spend that money in any given year, go, go back to parliament, give it to them and, and reallocate it for next year. But they don't do that. They just blow money like crazy. And when, when, when emergencies happen, they are stuck. They don't know what to do. But do you think this situation right here is because there was a situation, there's a pandemic. And that was like serious. Countries were closing their borders, yeah. that stuff were happening, and people were, were in a panic mode and all of that. Don't you think that mm -hmm. would be a reason where they would say, okay, we, we let's just bypass every protocol and make sure that we take out the money? Faru, we had pandemic this year. Last year it was floods. The year before it was floods. So why don't we have funds allocated Specifically, for emergencies for anything that was not on that was unforeseen emergencies and um, droughts, all these things have a fund that goes and does that, which will stop rushing around and trying to find money. And that money, what is spent on, has to be clearly defined. What you spend that money has to be clearly defined. You look at how much money was appropriated. Five hundred million was given to to was was what the Minister of Finance had had come up with, and. They've said they transferred 160 million to um, to the Ministry of Health, and out of 160 million, the Ministry of Health has spent about about 40 something million. Yeah. Now you look at all of what that money was spent on. The first thing on the line was buying vehicles for a government that owns a significant large amount of vehicles. 12 million. You know, a significantly large amount of vehicles is owned by this Gambi government. Why did they need to buy brand new cars? Why couldn't they reallocate vehicles from other sectors, other departments? Because think about it. Most of the government is under lockdown, isn't it? OK, we're on lockdown. We're not supposed to go out. People, so are, which means that nothing, People are not using cars. Nothing is, so where is the government vehicles? 
why couldn't they just move government vehicles from here? I'm saying, hey, we're on a lockdown. Take these I vehicles think, and give it to the health department. I think when the Minister of Finance was interviewed by Kex Tani and, and uh, Kex and uh, his uh, team at the National Assembly, what he said was uh, because they don't want to inconvenience other people because all these vehicles belong to somebody else. So if you take it from them, then they would not be able to, you know, I think he said something like that. But it's the like, schools are closed, isn't it? Yes. The schools are closed. Mm -hmm. Is the Ministry of Education closed? The Ministry of Education, Is, yes. Most of the ministries are closed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Doing anything. yeah. So why couldn't you allocate some of the vehicles that are sitting dormant right now because nobody's using them, nobody's going into work um, to be allocated for this project and when it's over, you take it back? Why do you need to buy a new one? So what happens to these vehicles after this pandemic is over? Well, they will just send them to one ministry. But uh, we do have Madi but, on the line now. <laughs> Madi Jobati is here. Uh, hello, Madi. How are you doing? Can you hear us? It looks like it looks like Madi is still hungry. That's the thing. <laughs> hello, Madi. Can you hear us? Madi, we can't hear you. Okay, so I think he's going to work on that. I just told him that we're not able to hear him. Madi? Hello, Madi. Madi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. We can hear you now. Just uh, put the volume down on your uh, listening device. Apparently, I can hear anything. Yeah, we can hear you, though. Okay, it looks like uh, Mari cannot hear us. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I think it's not work. So, well, what? Yeah, like the minister was saying, no, that is not an option because if they do that, they're in, going to inconvenience other people. But you're saying instead of spending twelve million on that, they could have just used uh, vehicle. Like they do it during the tours. If you remember, yes. the dental tours, they would stand at the dental bridge. The police would take uh, vehicles from uh, their owners and use them, and then return them later. Yeah, so the, they don't worry. They don't worry about inconveniencing them when it's tall. What but was they, the twelve million? But they would inconvenience them um, because of COVID, so they went and bought new cars. Um, you would have expected the most important thing would be hospitals, hospital workers, and the equipment that is needed to treat people. And this is where a significant, large amount of the money should have been in, invested in. Um, if you look at the overall expenditure with all of this, you get 12 million spent on cars, um, 14 million spent on, on accommodation. Yeah, hotel accommodation, uh, 14 million. Yeah, um, 100, 100, 1. 1.4 million is being spent on impressed and office expenditure or whatever they call that, and transport and, and all this stuff. So the most important places that the money was, should have been spent is the money should have been spent in equipment, um, PPEs, um, ventilators, and the things that they need to treat people. Because even if these things are not used in this round of round of the issues, um, round of this pandemic, they will be assets at the hospital that could be used in the future. How many ventilators do the Gambia has in total? How many? Yeah. Do we know? I think we checked. Somebody said some, someone mentioned five, and another person said four. Uh, but I do know that the Minister of Finance said uh, there's money that was sent in that was committed by the uh, World Bank, and that money went to Turkey straight to buy uh, ventilators. Yes, but Fatu, five ventilators, ten ventilators, fifty ventilators are not going to be enough. Mm -hmm. Are not going to be enough because if you look at the rate of infection. It doubles every few days. Okay. Now, if you have five ventilators, we're lucky right now. I don't know. For some reason, the, the rate of infection is not as high in the Gambia and people are not getting very sick. It could be a lot of factors. And I heard some people saying it's to do with the fact that um, a lot of the people in a lot of people in Africa have been are used to using anti-malaria drugs. So that could be why we're not getting very sick but i'm not a medical person so i don't know but those are the things that um if what happens in the uk in italy and the us happened in the gambia it would be a disaster 
the level of infections will be a disaster. So this is where we needed our money to have been spent directly into these hospitals, into the clinics, into the people who work in the hospitals. And for, not worry about buying all these cars, spending money on crazy stuff. You look at the, the hotel accommodation, $14 million on hotel accommodation. Yes, and uh, M, uh, uh, there are people sending messages saying it will be good if we can also speak in the local languages. And I'm sure you speak Mandinka very well. Yeah, right? I, I, not Lamenka. very well. I do speak Mandinka, but not very well. <laughs> but, uh, Banyu, but I speak Banyulunding Mandinka. Yeah, but Banyulunding Mandinka. Uh, yeah, because the most important thing in health care delivery is the frontline services, the people who directly deal with the patients mm -hmm. and the first contact with patients. Mm -hmm. If you're investing, so it invest Harley's, Harley's be a full flow of them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you're in an ambulance or you're in a whatever it is. But once they get to the hospital, how they get taken care of is important. Need favor be the 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 lawe in in the other countries. in Gambia and in so most parts of Africa, it's not as terrible as it is come Europe. So they want to get paid, but they America fini nagala fila we. Um, these advanced countries cannot cope with it. If the same rate of infections more than Gambia day. It will be a big disaster because so we can take a be a five ventilators if you have 10 patients what do you do you start choosing who lives and who dies instead mm -hmm. of buying cars the first thing in their mind should have been nakala new jende more ventilators to go to the hospital with nakala new trainees when staff if you use those ventilators because we don't know um how many people are going to say, get sick how long they're going to be sick for and and you know, those are the things you need to do. Every region, every town, every village should have a way for them Major health centers here, but then you ventilators. Rather than jail motor, halis gender motor is at this point where almost everything is at a standstill in Gambia. You could just take vehicles from various departments, join the Ministry of Health. At the end of it, they are local. Hello, Madi. Hello, Madi. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. Okay, so if you can hear us, okay, so we, maybe we can uh, speak with you on Messenger. There's a lot of noise coming through, though. You can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. This one is very, yeah. very good. So, Madi, we are talking about the amount committed by the Ministry of Finance to address the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we are looking at the budget, and then I saw that you made a comment about it uh, on Facebook. Uh, so there are a lot of people who are talking about this issue, saying that uh, the breakdown is not very clear. And for those who did not have the opportunity to see your Facebook post, uh, what can you tell us? What, what is it that you don't understand, or what is it on that budget uh, that got you uh, start talking about it? Yeah, thank you. Um... Um, actually, on, on Sunday, uh, the Minister of Finance released uh, the press release that they said is to show, for purpose of transparency, the funds that were utilized so far. So um, when I looked at it first, I was surprised uh, that um, 
you know, that same Ministry of Health actually utilized only 41 million uh, because until uh, Sunday, my understanding from the Minister of Finance and the Bureau of Payments released is that they have spent uh, 116 million uh, out of the 512 or 500 million that was allocated. Mm -hmm. But then when you look at the breakdown of the 41 million as well, um, I see a lot of things that uh, do not uh, tell me that this is an accurate report. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I know it was a press release, um, so probably they, they have more details to make available, for example, when they meet the National Assembly. But then the, the details that they gave is the allotted budget line, sort of, the allowances, transport expenses, uh, purchase of fuel and lubricants, and miscellaneous office expenses, and then they explain uh, some of these things were made back. And so when you look at the uh, various items, uh, for me, there is more questions. So that was in fact the title of my Facebook page, that the Minister of Finance raised more questions than provided uh, answers. Mm -hmm. So that when you claim uh, allowances went to up to $5.5 million, yeah. uh, you want to know how many frontline workers are you talking about? Uh, this is for a period of what? You know, how many days of work? Uh, what is the payment rate? Uh, the other ones, the rates that they pay. And then you have something like transport expenses, which was like 2.2 million. Mm -hmm. And that is explained as. Um, nice so the, the, with that item line is called transport allowances mm -hmm. or expenses, but the, the nose to explain what that means it refers to night allowances. And clearly, night allowances and transport expenses are very different. Yeah, but, but so, uh, yeah, I don't understand. Mm, you mean they, they have allowances and then they have transport expense? Mm -hmm. Which no, means night allowance. Which, ex which was explained as a night allowance. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Madi, well, go ahead. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so that, that is very uh, interesting. I mean, uh, because these two things are very different and uh, folks that work, particularly in the Ministry of Health, are very familiar with these towns because uh, they do a lot of field visits, field work. So a night allowance and a transport expense are very, very different. Then, you know, you have purchase of fuel and lubricants. And, um, you know, so again, uh, these are for which vehicles? I mean, um, maybe the new know, ones. How do you dispose? Maybe the new ones. Maybe uh, they buy to reserve them. The lubricants. Yeah, so they, they they should know which vehicles these are, and uh, but then you know where you have transport expenses explained above, and then which is actually referring to night allowances, and then you have purchase of fuel and lubricants, uh, which is talking about just fuel and lubricants. Uh, you wonder, you know, um, why the, the, the these terms are being used uh, in that way, and then you you have these. Uh, thing called miscellaneous office oh, expenses. Like an, an impress, and the impress. Two, uh, one is an impress. Yes. No, no, unexpected expenses and impress. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, administrative expenses uh, is understood to be Retired. money you carry along mm -hmm. uh, to take care of the daily subsistence uh, and other contingencies, emergencies when you are in a field visit traveling. So inside the country, regional health directors are carrying up to 1.3 million as impressed. I mean, what are they going to really uh, take care of when already uh, you have allowances? Yes, and transport expense. Transport expense, you call allowance, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so what is this impress about? Yeah. And then, of course, unexpected expenses. When anytime you hear unexpected expenses, Miscellaneous. that means on budget. Yes. Yeah, they are on budgeting. So, mm -hmm. uh, why are they not budgeting? Uh, because on budgeted expenses is a is a cancer in this country. Uh, you know, in, in the budget, um, in, in the past, I remember during the Jamie days, um, when the former vice president would go to parliament for supplementary appropriation, one of the items that she would claim was on 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 budgeted expenses because of unforeseen stuff. I mean, uh, and really, that, that is not something. Uh, we should entertain that uh, government would be spending 
uh, you know, on unexpected expenses. It's it's a very uh, fluid area that uh, you know is is cause for concern. So another area is a hotel accommodation. Um, Fourteen million. You know, I find this pretty, yeah, very interesting because uh, if it is about those that have been quarantined, uh, one needs to raise the question: Should we send our folks to be quarantined to hotels, or ca can we have um, cheaper? I mean, adequate accommodation. Um, you know, because it's like two weeks, so they are not tourists, they are not travelers. Uh, it's it's a very definite purpose. So uh, the idea of sending uh, people that to uh, to be quarantined to hotels for me is not sustainable, and it's not wise. And then in any case, we have it, and 14 million alone should raise alarm that look, this is not something uh, that is wise to do to, to send people to. Hotel, but which hotels are these anyway? And I, mean, I can, I can also place? tell you, I, I can also tell you, Mari and M. M. is also here. He's with us. Um, his expertise is in finance. I can tell you that I, I have tried to get information about how many people were in were quarantined, and it's a uh, three hundred and forty nine people were quarantined, uh, uh, and that is up to today's record. Today's close of business. M is 349 people. So 349 people, M, we're talking about over 14 million. Uh, well, that, is, that, is what I, that is what I got when I, when I went and looked at um, the Facebook post that Ministry of, um, Ministry of Health was giving. Mm -hmm. um, they, they were giving running, running commentaries until, I think, middle of last month, and they stopped giving running commentaries on people who were quarantined. Mm -hmm. um, I think the last one they did was April 27th. Um, so I had a number of about 347 or 350 something, and that divided by 14 million um, 700 and something, um, you will get about 39,000. So that works out as 39,000 was spent. Now, if everybody spent um, 14 days, that will come to about just over $2,000. Um, $2,000 um, was paid out per person per night. $2,000. Now, yeah just over 2000 something i don't have the figures on my on hands and i'm just using the figures i remember from my head that mm -hmm. i did about an hour ago mm -hmm. um but it will be about two thousand between two thousand and three thousand dollars sterling spent per person per night over over the period um mm -hmm. which is outrageously expensive um for 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 the government to spend that and did they actually spend that because we understand the first batch of people who were supposed to be quarantined they didn't stay in the hotel some of them left that was when we had the big issue at the airport and people said yeah. going then this then the second group that i understand were supposed to be in quarantine was the one that tumanjai's mom was part of an um tumanjai's daughter or somebody was part of that second batch of quarantine which i don't think lasted the amount of days that the quarantine was supposed to take place so why did they spend that much money and you'd look at food and food services um i think they were saying that was money spent for feeding these people whilst they were in quarantine um but I understand all of the hotels in the Gambia are um, are supposed to be operating in all on the all inclu um, all inclusive. So if it is all inclusive, why do we need to buy extra food? So Madi, uh, that is M's take. Uh, like I said, we tried to find out how many people were quarantined, and 389 up to close of business today. That's what we got. Uh, and what was spent on there was over 14 million dollars. That must be really expensive. So, like I said, we've actually tried to reach out to the um, to government officials here and also. Uh, but uh, they said that it's a, a very busy day today. It's Monday, but they're going to get back to us very soon with a break. With you know, try to explain more. Uh, so, Mali, three hundred and eighty-nine uh, spent about fourteen million. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so I, I think part of the, the point is um, certainly um, COVID-19 mm -hmm. uh, would impose severe costs on us. And um, I completely agree um, that frontline workers need to be um, paid allowances uh, because they, they are the people at the front. Uh, they are soldiers right now and they leave families behind. and. Um, you know, people are not paid well, particularly 
those workers, health workers. And so um, they, they would need to be um, motivated. But also it's about their security um, that they are paid, um, you know, allowance like that. But uh, what we should not allow is um, the usual practice to continue. Just because we have this crisis, uh, you generate all sorts of necessities uh, narratives just to uh, put money where it is not necessary, which in most cases would be diverted. So that when you look at this 41 million, um, the only health, direct health resource uh, that you can see would be, would be medical and hospital equipment, and which is about ventilators. Yeah. Um, so uh, you wonder, um, you know, where are the uh, test kits? Because right now, the, the, the major equipment, you know, as a non-health person, for in my understanding of what is happening around the world and about this uh, pandemic, this, this virus, is uh, test kits are uh, probably the frontline weapons we need. Um, where are the test kits? And as we are talking, one of our CSOs, Gambia participate, uh, who are following the money, youth COVID money, uh, they just released a report, and you look at the uh, 12 uh, quarantine centers around the country, they visited all of them, and um, they found that uh, most of them are in very poor conditions that uh, even the health workers there are not um, willing to keep any um, COVID patient or suspect in those places. I mean, um, I just posted one of their I mean, that report an excerpt about a center in Massacre. Um, you know, so uh, what I am seeing, honestly, I, I am annoyed, I am angry um, as a citizen that once again, um, we are seeing a plunder of our resources, um, you know, by officials that until today refuse to be, uh, to abide by the rule of law in terms of, in the first place, Accessing these 500 million and use it uh, and then use it appropriately, mm -hmm. you know. So um, imagine you you spend specialized and technical materials, 3.6 million, and all you explain, you know, in the notes is that that is the purchase of vital sanitary products, metal soap, hand sanitizer. I mean, 3.6 million. All of these CSOs, political parties, private sector, every business now, every home you go to in the Gambia, people are, are putting. A, bo a bottle, a bo a bo I mean, a bucket of water and soap in front of them, uh, <laughs> in, in, you know, in, in the houses. Yeah. Yes, to a government who gone back, I mean, 3.6 million for of them. I mean, I, I think if they have really spent that money, they now they don't be short in this country. Nobody, I mean, 3.6 million. So you're saying, Dettel, you're saying, if Italian? you're saying, if 3.3.6 million was spent on Dettel, right now there'll be no Dettel in Gambia. They would have bought all the Dettel. I mean, yes. <laughs> An amount of that much, I mean, spent on something like that one, which is, you know, a bottle of that one is what, 150 to 200? I mean, the big bottle. So, I mean, clearly, I think uh, what is happening in this, uh, I, I mean, I am shocked that in the first place, this report, because it appears it came from the Ministry of Health, that it would be given to the Ministry of Finance, who are finance people, to look at who it. accept this report, and have the audacity to paste it on the yeah. website and to give it to Gambians, which are doing their due diligence on their part to, to make sure that they don't put something there. Because as finance people, they should ask themselves, but a transport allowance and a night allowance cannot be mixed up, you know? Yeah. So I, I think, uh, I hope our National Assembly members will really, I mean, um, you know, take up this issue very seriously and, and call the Minister of Health and the Minister of uh, uh, Finance to, to really give details to this and, and not just give any rationalized, I mean, um, you know, uh, statements or uh, comments like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, because, I mean, spending all this stuff on, on hotels and. Uh, well, and, it, it, it just shows, it just on, shows how, on, how careful and diligent. I, I hear, um, I think Mr. Sanjay talking about hotels being. Uh, all inclusive. Yes, if you are lodging in a hotel, at least you are and bread and breakfast. I, I mean, yeah. So the rest of it would be your lunch and dinner. That you know, I mean, you should go buy some some rate. That you know, uh, and in this case, you are not even going to give them cash. You you know, I mean, get uh, get uh, pay directly to the hotel. So 
been uh, uh, where you have accommodation why is that 14 million separate from food and food service so what is this for then you have training mm-hmm. 41 million normally when you have training two days five days if the training includes venue and food so really this food and beverages uh, it, it needs to be further explained so I'm, I'm really furious with the Minister of Health for putting together such a report, but even more furious for those who are put there uh, to check our finances, to manage our finances well, would accept this kind of a report and then send that to Gambians to consume. I mean, what, what are you trying to say? Well, Emma, if you look at this, uh, it looks like there's a lot of duplication. Uh, the uh, You are paid allowance, you are paid transport allowance, you are also paid, uh, you are given impress and office expenses and all of that. And I think uh, impresses should be always be retired. At the end of the day, if you don't spend all of it, you should return the rest, right? So but, it looks like but, there's a lot of duplication. In a, normal, in a normal system that works, mm-hmm. okay, Officials should not be given impressed and big amount of money to drive around in town. Yeah, okay. there should be a system where if you spend money, you 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 can you should be able to pay for it. Come back with the receipt and claim your money. Mm-hmm. If that is not possible, the vendors who are, you are taking stuff from should be able to invoice you, and that invoice is then taken to your accounts department and lodged with those people and said, "Hey, we have spent X amount of money," rather than having. Because the more money you have out there as impressed and all these things, it becomes a big problem to track it. Mm-hmm. The reason why European companies or Western companies do not like money being out there, governments do not like money being out there with everybody, because it becomes a nightmare to track it. It becomes uncontrollable. It leads to corruption. Now, why do you need one and a half million as impressed? It's a lot of money. I'm not, I'm not fan of how the administrative expenditure and impressed, I think. Um, it's like petty cash, something like uh, one point something million in petty cash. Well, uh, now, my no, office expenses are impressed. Yeah, so office expenses, manimajang accounting used to mean uh, petty cash. Well, well, it's almost one point five. Yeah, that used to mean petty cash. So at that time, you know, it used to be one hundred and fifty dollars. You put it in your drawer. And if somebody needs pencil or pen or whatever it is, right, it's not bad. anything bigger than that, yeah. you have to go to the accountant. <laughs> Get money. You don't come to the impressed. Why, if Legi, you were looking at government departments having such a large amount of money, who controls it? Who manages it? What it is? What is it spent on? So it allows for a lot of expenditure, Boham, and nobody is accountable for it. So uh, if you look at Mari, if you look at medical, that's 352,000 medical yeah. and hospital equipment. Yeah, that is, that is the, they spent 12 million on cars, they spent 14 million on accommodation, but they spent $319,000, yeah. which is the frontline area. The more, most of the money should have been going into medical and medical equipment. Mari, Mari, I'm going to talk to you about the financial equipment. Medical hospital equipment will medical yeah, I mean, member uh, drone, but in Dunia Bay, a be mentioning that the passoto, a be clear a battle because the end in the balloo, they ma man ke chat kenda drone, but you know na fanko na tanko na you know tanina you know I mean yau yau dia mira dal a be le ma so drone ko ya. Mazakunda before the man of the past five million court. But in the time I got lamented drunk, uh, the past one would be Jay, uh, a ten dollar man of a Lankana Matapupere, I do cook and enter Luna Mentor. Because in the experience of a man of Gambit Frontier, 
ni hakuna ba kan jamin ga fukan jinto na ebola sato in jam ya je an ko di jamadu na je wato i remember until at tango we also um civil society engaged on it but a lot of issues at that time you know mo mo da sono la comme being ga fo nyame and now ko ko do me do na ta ta re nyama ma ko slati an na yon ko banku do comme ni ko sere lion a la diri an ni jiri na ko ebola e matolo ki baba ke fu won la dan mol me la ko ebola soto dum fo ken ya do wala mol fata ji won la fa la banta ma sakunda sam la kitola ko million million dollar me ka dunta pour ma ko ro men na ta sere lion ka be putu pata do nyame ya be nya nyame ya be tapal ya nyame so the situation in bona this can get the b me along ko folo folo na minister of finance na masakuna loyalia landi nyame na constitutional do ani na public finance act ni banko ku sifa do tati mo a jareta masakuna ta parliamento pour l'amérique ni ni carte pour parliament je bula ko do nanga mo do ta ya defense ko ko do me banko tati o manke ku di me along ko isso common de nisso não é que a gente é violent que a gente não pode dizer é assim mas já não me alongo o dinheiro do por causa de que na mas a gente não bunda o oficial ele é common de nisso a nível do comum que quer a está a canal na se fez canal calé só me quando banca nisso case do que sabe o que dizer é assim o case do que sabe o que é violent mas nisso o homem não é a manter violent curti só falou falou o único de me alongo o banco não está o faham nem falou em que aí na nível reporto me alongo a uh, ministry of finance ya bonni min di maslo now me entendi me akoro folo folo ministry of health because a minta ko wolle ni report do da ya ki finance ko kole but ministry of health it al fallen men sa fe jam am am ko di nalon ko mo maji ki ten tanto si fa si dola bari ni ko si fa man ke ko di nalon ko ni maji ko le tel ya bari ministry of health ko bu ga banko ta man ta won ki pandi tel il a fait work fin visit ibitare binal so ni aji be iko coming transport allowance transport expense when the department do the coming uh turning na court million of wolf fla i mean million of fla there is a million of fla mental meta out but but in other court like na madam ko me ni ko transport expense wo ko fam bunati iko net allowance wala ni tata e bota bang ni tata fo ba se bang fo you know for the fenye Ustifa, ibe jora mene kumi suda sote baada la banta, ibe jora mene. So, wani kani na wajambo na jua la, yeah. So, ibe jora kisila mene la. Hmm. Atamuta wale kwa mani kwa ibe jora kisila. Atamuta wale kwa mani kwa ibe jora kisila. Ha, iko alawans. Five point five million. Hmm. Kwa njia, ah, nimkurang, ah, na do kwa jana kenda bunda do kula health workers bem então o leco malé daí então o amor de mel moço já rolou nem corona para as pessoas há bolos a manter que difícil food só na só já não é Gambia na health workers não então é que a moment nem curanta então é que a testa então é que a topo tola o colo então é que cura estrange you know tu vai abrir América e na health workers já mais fácil a nem cor só como é que dá ruim a o leco não a nem que you know há nem de nenhum nem de ensaio isso é que não Nyanta wa kila, so nde I agree kwa nyanta alawans bado ni vile, bara buto ni mmoja fanya kuhusu na fanya kile kuti mene lanti na mati, ha mene la ringali dulka, so bara ni nata kumin bro alawans iko five point five million, kwa sana fanya ni vile, fadi mo mo la asole mene mani la asole bang, mo mene la asole mene mene asole nyanta mene asole nyanta kambi la mene asole bang, so ni lanti na mo inka ni ya fote, so ni nata na reporto kabri sana vumbuma. Ibda jela je kuwa jela mialongo ni karo asiga halibat. The commission ni nus express ni nami commission ni nus wala kuwa mialongo kujama be kuwa kono. You know manlang chana. Mende na million kiling kwa fomu le kimenal mental mental. Yena oji be iko bunda mental. Yaje. Isi jahal. Yaje. Isi jahal karo ni kwa impress. Impress dengan melong, because you know dengan project world mana manage dia, you know in my development work, isi ini ada thamala, ibu cai kono di dalam melong ko, ku ila ila lab lah ila domoro, ku si boleh nak kajian dalam melong ko, isi kono ufah depan sot je, baru ufah nak ufah disuruh nanti nak, 
So one quarter million killing which is seven. You the you go regional head direct. You go head direct to join the banking bank. I'm on Jamiri. Uh, war 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 war. So well, then you should have impressive fun. Now that you the person who then you go there. Say well, then you should have impressive fun. Ila ila nal allowance detail. Ila transport allowance detail. Uh, you know, in the food, uh, eco accommodation, in the training, all those what I just said. Some impressive people, they are more detailed. And, and uh, I think uh, the the, uh, the bigger uh, thing that we should remember. Yeah, but that's cool. And then, malo yeni yeni dara nyame. All right. But then, another hand they yeni dara near key finance. Finance, one of them go make a na flow to pull on ya. In the magic ring, go finance go yeni dara most of them may along go. Inyanta health gini kala bari Allah niyel kuor dol bije alia sahi kani kuor dol bije iman salaya kuor dol bije ibe chakasirin ali bondi nyot bari chama oke but i i i i na kau you know si kau kin telma banko diu ma koha Allah reporto file lafla lan kano me men kafa ali afale tibu Allah reporto file. Wete ame hanta masu. Bako no i ame na loko ima jana chile damo na. Okay, man. It's anga. I'm not boy. I'm going to go and mandin ko moy. The biba for the. Ah, ng ng mandin ko moy. Then 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 after we follow one of them, then go. And you could do. You know, five hundred million could do. Is on top of the Ministry of Health budget. So monies are being spent in parallel. So ning ng ng jube, the directors of health and regional directors will not do ko mo regional based thing. So a lot of what they do should be based on the regions and. Based on the health budget, this should be focused on on primarily money that goes directly to deal with COVID cases, because mm -hmm. that's what the minister said. Minister of Health has a two billion dollars budget. Mm -hmm. Now that is not enough to deal with COVID cases, so they had an emergency amount of money put aside, and the the way it was done it was all wrong, and I don't accept me. What the minister should have done, Minister Nyanta Tala, a tap parliament, a supplementary budget put put in place. Well, and they, I budget to revise. Kadu, I think IMF. IMF, you mean for the environment quota? Well, I mean, the environment should not fundamentally alter the budget as it was passed by the minister, by the National Assembly. Reading departmental budgets and taking their money from them fundamentally alters the budget as it was passed by the ministry because it would not look like what it was when the parliament passed it. Because monies have been moved all over the place, and budget o mu munti wale munti ko na 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 flow mansia ni na flow mansia nyanta make sure ko nga kolo dun di dau da drong abe na fasro that's what budgets are for now niya mo kile ni somebody mo kile na na di ata kolo bun di janga bun di jana ay kolo bun di janga ay bun di jana woman woman ke budget ay man na fasro katung the minister on his own is able to determine where he wants to spend money. Mm -hmm. Now, if all of this pandemic ends tomorrow, how is the government going to function? Where is the money going to come from? He will eventually have to go back to parliament sometime in September or sometime in October I put to submit a supplementary budget. Why didn't he do it in the first place? Mm -hmm. Because that is the right thing to do. Yeah. Anyanta anyanta supplementary budget sambal la parliament parliament ye wo approve ye kodo give diala ay wo kodo lande kara but am nya na tala ay government department la budget will be ta then ni 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 pandemic ko banta mo ne be kala departments be ron na nyaade be so i'm gonna Tina Mulu, Ita Fananka, a continuing Kodo Banta department, the Ron Lanyadile, Namana New Osita, maybe what we want to be a labor, Kuntula Dam and Kota Yonati, but imagine of the Indian Kalaman, a well and co, a phenomenon for them for co, Detolo, Ninim Femesa, or New Lupano, in Felco Santa Mena, a commander of Fananta, the Lafoda, so million Saba, a bosila, a million Saba, a local Faneco, Detolo, Le Sangola, what an island, the new Samaki and Tulkuran Kodi, Jiko, Bibo Bolantola. Yeah, so yeah, so imagine like um, you know, all the things in the world that we can, we could let them be alone. It be sure that they are But for the 
Ukrainadi. So that Niel Gibe, a budget role and a minute for Royal and Ningam, I could not support you. Mosaji Kobari Health Lum, Kuro Bumba Baby Channing Health coming Jatakenda Joran Yaj. So Naida Medical and Hospital Equipment. So my particular call. We are going to put him along with the Bumba Baby Tower. But unfortunately, what are Kuro men doing down there? But then yet abunda logi be eco specialized and technical material. What is man can specialize technical materials with this? Because that all man can specialize or technical material. So if no man can technical material, how shall it as a man can technical material? Not only we go test it, but some people want them technical material too or ventilator want them technical material. But not a hand sanitizer or metal. But you know, that one in South, no new hand sanitizer. Yet, there is millions of Kemawara. I mean, Kemawara, it's our wind work. But one of Bangkok, that will be Abyss. Let me just say, I'm not going to go to the hotel. So, you know, 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 you Korba bunda tu bang, kau bunda korba kono, kau juga belum orang jalan insaf. Ia lebih dikit jamah tu isaji, kau juga belum orang je. Nalun ko bank ni tu, bunda jamah lor lor biji. So dah nak ko area kau ni, fang ngam dah ko government tu non sura kat dekat orang sampai dekat. Kau kasih insaf kau tuan, kau ni bon. Kau mau beli, mau beli bunda tu. Because mau already, ha, mau lah faham rosak dah tu nasi lah. Mau faham beli kerana kau tegang, kau fikir. I mean, more than all individuals, your parents and visual is only suffering the Saturday mall. I didn't even put them, can we get young, not planning war or something, not around all day. The council member in Kimberly Dunn, I would have, I, 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 and I see many other people, it also if I, 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 Wuli, wuli million sebab sahno. Mana sahno mana yang seorang yang bangkok tu? Kalau yang punya punya, dia sahno sahno. Kalau sahno ni, sahno ni detol, sahno ni detol lor. So, so mana yang seorang punya? Ya, so so mana yang ni ni report lah. Definitely, I mean, I ni aku ya, ah, I'm mislearning, mislearning back eh. ก็อ่านหน้าฟลอร์มเนี่ยนะครับคุณลองคัดเคลมอ่านหน้าเคลมคุณจะไม่ลองก็ยังต้องเซ็นบอร์ดเมื่อสุดนะคันนี้เคล
and apparently kalo kaje ko mbenya ndiye weke ya understand ke baje la ko iba make sure la ko na from men dultana zora men na nyim banko kan ay dambiya ko men nyala nyalon ko jang manyin la fang kaje ko covid case at covid case kaso don every day by now there you should be reducing the cases not to see yeah. it increase mm. definitely our capacity also and our capacity is 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 enhanced by our size and our population you know that is one straight trip but even 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 the money even the amount of fuel even the amount of fuel wow even the amount of fuel you look at the amount of fuel that was purchased it's roughly about 15000 liters of fuel now 15000 liters is a lot of fuel mm -hmm. to use in 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 such a short period of time so these are the things mohammed limala don wala from the beginning there in gambia when they ever there is a crisis they go and figure out where to get the money first and then figure out how to spend it rather than strategically plan what they need and where they need to do it and what they need to invest money in then figure out where they get the money from so when the money comes in it goes to the things that they need it to go but doing it other way around getting the money first and figuring how to spend it means you can you will always spend the money because it's available there's no restrictions there's no reason to think um if it's hotel is 100 million oh we got 5 million pay 14 million is fine mm -hmm. let's pay 3 million in in um in food and food services and all that crazy stuff so lolo mo is in problem you design your budget you find the money then you expend the money not find the money then design the budget lolo mo tanga am di silly numbers because they're making them up mm -hmm. well i mean it's, it's yeah. really i think they they would uh, uh, have to sit down and take a look at this why the hotels that we're talking about the hotels where they spent what was it again was it 14 million 14 million uh, yeah yeah this uh, uh badala and golden beach hotel so um i'm being told right here that the arrangements were strictly drawn uh by the central committee at the central committee level and that uh, the hotel staff said they are not privy to any arrangement or negotiation between the hotels and the ministry uh, so this was done at a different level uh, people who are the hotel are not privy to any detail they don't know anything about it uh, so you know, they, they were just asked to show up at work but imagine Uh, more le bije men yalla ko to le advantage ta president wala because ate ma long e bani ko do do fay ab bani ko do do kala muta so do do fane wala fo tay tay woje nyaandi le ate la mo banko president wati bari ko ni ko do do fanan abu ka ba kala ma because ka tay men di to la ay carte blanche le di gay wala koma ka foy ne ngal ke ni place to le dul la ta la ali do ko ka nyaama so ya mala fo ni ni ko si fal tuba because ay corruption wa diamo siat Well, um, men senator, men senator, men daughter, one of them, at the long president. So, how long? How many long? How big? How come? How many? How? Uh, who about the block? And if I understand, I have to go. Uh, at the end of the day, attend that responsibility. And yes, um, I mean, um, more to come before. baroman karan wa ma yi faham abinitan but mosi karan ne fanan fo fo ka to ni yes ye ye taw ye tin balya ke ilo because baro has a vast president bank is very educated i come to the bank that very educated baro found ke balet yes ke balo coming senior citizen mem uh beni banko kan uh awlu ta men dañi banko la kan in bankola ko adu tajele fadu da politiko kono fadu da bitu da fala abla da political party kono mel ko be ilim bariale kala kan yim banko so basic common sense who is there you know sometimes it it buka karan ka ke a financial expert or a doctor or what you have what is called trained intelligence you know mel ko i mean as been a harama dum ko mi mo harama dum ti a ni haklo so ni melo ko si si la fanan ye haklo bula ko ko no ani ko ko ras sa ko do nadari ye place o mara membo ko president ya sa ko ni ka ka han min mo memo fati mo memo i mean um to to 
then you should not be absolving yourself of anything else. Baro made a conscious decision to run for office. Okay. In his mind, he has the capacity, he has the capability, and he has the ability to run the country. And he understands all the intricacies of running a country. So man, I will not excuse Barone, he is clueless or he doesn't understand. Isn't that the first point of leadership is to be curious. You should be able to ask questions. You should be inquisitive. Baro, Buduna na Gambia, we magi Gambia, we neka fa kilifa. He doesn't understand there is corruption and people take advantage in in Gambia. He does. If he doesn't understand that, he shouldn't be in state house. People are not taking advantage of him. He is just being lazy, and not wanting to find out. Yo, Baro, there are certain people you should never appoint them into special into certain positions. Because, look, the other day. You look at how this money was raised. Mamburinjai, back in, I think, um, about two weeks ago, he was in parliament. When he first laid the bill in parliament, he clearly told parliament Nevin, um, the contingency has not been spent mm. in the budget. The contingency has not been spent in the budget. He went back last week and he told them the contingency has already been spent. Now, this is the finance minister who's been raiding all sorts of budgets to create money. Same guy sitting in parliament two weeks ago telling them that the contingency has not been spent. Going back the following week and saying contingency has been spent. Which is which? So if Baro sits at State House, does he not look at these videos? Does he not ask these people questions? He should be asking questions. Because at the end of the day, when all is said and done, the box stops with it. Yeah. And the Gambians will go after him. Exactly. So uh, um, another issue, but you know, by if as in we have one hour to iftar and ham gare from you know the farakioyo. So um, I don't know if you've seen it today in the newspapers that uh, two uh, military officers, soldiers are arrested uh, because they stole rice. You know the rice that, that that's at the uh, at the, at the Masaka Square. Uh, uh, there is news that and actually the army PR confirmed it.
Well, I, I, I saw the uh, some report here. Yeah, I don't know, uh, Punga, maybe it could be a pardon or the newspapers about uh, soldier old man for him. But if he, um, uh, uh, um, any, any uh, moment be a development for him, and particularly if, if uh, near the West, the like development Tata Nyame, why, you know, at Tanfada, one of the advantages is because of decentralization. You know, um, but the moment you call centralized room, uh, you realize for uh, corruption, inefficiency, Simoka Wara Walter, and Kilimbali and Bel Now, that we have a decentralized structure in this country. Yeah, yeah. So that ni Masakunda ko Ibe Mano di la Mall, all right, from Bancho. Uh, we have local government structures uh, from BCC came to the area council for Basel. Mm -hmm. Now, every, if you take BCC, uh, it's composed of wards. Every ward has a councillor. So that if you want to distribute in Banjo, you can say, okay, for Banjo allocation, Basel to BCC. And from BB, BCC, every ward council come and get your ward allocation. Every ward in Banyol has compounds. And every, uh, so from the ward, the man of and ward, every compound come and get your rice or you take it to your house. Similarly, Nico Sierra, you take it to the area council at Janjambure. Uh, area, Janjambure area council has councillors. Those councillors are from wards. The wards constitute the whole area council. So yeah. every area councillor, is the facility clearly, they get the rice to their ward. And everyone has villages, towns and villages, Seifol and al -Karul, let them come and pick their supplies to, to go. So that uh, you can track the movement of these materials from the central level to the you know regions, to the wards, to the uh, villages, to the compounds, to the houses. You see? So if you don't do that, I let you criticize and um, you know, uh, I mean, they are centralized. Then what happens is uh, the monitoring becomes weak. And no monitoring by weak in wrong. Some people will try to take advantage. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm surprised that uh, at the end of the day, New Fred and Najako Sati, Jamabi, Jamabi, and Milner and Master. And secondly, New Copeta and Yam, Anger and Yapanako already many individuals, many civil society organizations, many political parties, final debt distribution kicker. So government, how are you linking with political parties? What information are you collecting? So that uh, you make sure the distribution can be done in you know, uh, from government, from political party, from civil society, one compound, but then the next compound, that's nothing. Yep. You know. So, uh, there is something that you have to work out, uh, so that you can all duplicate those wrong. In the end, some benefit, and then uh, no more benefits. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know what system, mm -hmm. you know, how they're working this, but the fact that this incident happened tells me, go, uh, you know, the system of a company can uh, name and a program by the time the parallel will go. So, Mali Gang Lolo, the Amma Nyari Sorda in Japate, uh, Ami Piaro, the confirmed Nakon in Japan and then you lent it in. You know, the Mali Indon Yogo for Park, you know, see you in Don Sacha, why I'm a Kuane, Sachi in Korea, when I said Wala Lent. Well, Fatu, this year, when we when we talk, soon we have Biri Deca, let's always focus on it, soon Deca Bilen. From the beginning, there were so many things surrounded around this rise. Fadla Halis Bijogi, nobody said until being press minister last week when Halis B was part of a debt relief mm -hmm. um, that Gambia received. But the, he never mentioned that to anybody before that. Then tender And look at the day the tender was put out and the day the mala was the rice was delivered. See Alex. See that has never happened in the history of the Gambia. The, the point more than that, Baro has been sitting in state house doing nothing for so long. And all of a sudden, he woke up out of his sleep and decided, 
I have to show something. I have to do something. Maki sala hindi na galing mga lugar ko sa Senegal di ko jehe. Kumantamit I have to do something for me. Not for the Gambia, but for me, Baro. So you take 700 million of Gambians' money, buy buy rice, buy living, instead of using government institutions. There should be government institutions taking care of this, from central government to local government to regional governments, to take care of this and distribute to the local because. Central go federal like a local government, see your hands and citizens see more than central government doors. Let them distribute it. But the moment you mix state resources with political ambition and political psychophants, linger there. Do one of them. Do one of them. The the people who need the, the donation the most will never get it. The Gambian population would have forked out seven hundred million dollars. See, when you go home, it's a campaign money for Adam Obaro to use as a campaign tool. Um, and then nothing will come out of it. You always hear Marcy say that people are complaining that they don't have enough money and they're being forced not to come in and sell. Could that rice not have been given to them? Could that seven hundred million not have been used to pay to help those those families? No, they didn't think of that, but they were thinking of personal benefit when they came up with policies. Public policy and personal benefits do not mix. <laughs> So we're about to wrap this program up, and finally, uh, I know that hey, you very you don't want to The other issue that uh, a lot of people talk about is the president's lack of communication with the people. Um, I'm the one that they. No, I'm the one that they. This is normal. It could as long as they. So this is where we're going to close it. Uh, what is your take on uh, communication at this point? Uh, we have seen there a lot of world leaders are talking every day. So on Trump, yes, nako, maybe pressure with him, yes, he won't marry na. But uh, Andrew K uh, Como, for instance, Munge wah every day. Uh, you, yep. So, Madi, do you think this is important for the president to be coming out regularly uh, to be talking to the people? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, and this goes for. I mean, this basic goes for. Any, any, and every country. When, when your country faces a crisis, um, the uh, most single individual uh, citizens would want to hear, see, is the head of that, that country. Mm -hmm. It is like even a compound. I mean, when there's a crisis in a compound, mm -hmm. in, in a family, Alpha, um, you. you know, um, the family members who want to see the head of family uh, taking the leadership, and the leadership not necessarily. Uh, to speak on the specifics, because certainly a president may not be a doctor, or I may not be a health in, uh, a security expert, or um, you know all of that. You know, a president, a leader, what you can do is to generate uh, confidence, is to generate hope, to provide assurance, is to maintain unity uh, of the people, is to create confidence, and so. Um, You know, and, and those things cannot come from anybody better than the, the president. So at, at least the moment, I mean, uh, you can have every day to Gambians. It has value. If you can afford to speak every day to Gambians, it has value. All right? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, don't sit there for so long that people begin to wonder, in fact, are you under quarantine or something? You know? I mean, we, we've seen our leaders engaging. and not just coming to talk to people on a recent scale. Speak to the people from your heart. You know, I mean, share their concerns, their feelings. I mean, make them understand you are thinking about them. I mean, you, you just start to strengthen your leadership. All right? And this is what is lacking in, in this country. And I think this is also all the more needs, I mean, you know, malpractices and uh, confusion uh, taking place and uh, and so on. All right? And I, I don't know. I mean, um, Baron should, should, should learn. I mean... Um, you know on his own it's i mean if you don't have people trying to put you through but i mean as i said you, you are an adult you've you've lived uh, in the school of life all right you've seen what is happening around you i mean as a president i mean you should be the most informed citizen because i mean all the experts will report to you on a daily basis on the state of affairs in your country and so you should be able to put all of that together and have a conversation with your citizens so yeah. I, i i'm 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 really um you know uh, been shocked and uh, utterly unhappy uh, that he decides to uh, abandon this thing in the hands of 
the health minister. I mean, not just him, but his entire cabinet. Because he had to abandon everything to the Minister of Health. And COVID, yes, it's a health issue, it's a virus, but the you know the greater part of it is not health, it's livelihood. Yeah, it's economics. You know, it's I mean, education, it's things like that. So we need to hear the Minister of Education. We need to hear the Minister of Interior. We need to hear the Minister of Defense, of the Minister of you know, Forestry, all of these uh, important uh, in this moment of crisis. So, but to just think that this is a health issue, so is the Minister of Health's problem, it's a huge misunderstanding, and of course, a negligence of duty at a time when the country needs this leadership. Okay, well, thank you. And uh, your take on that uh, uh, before I let you go, Malik? Uh, Fadu, yes, sir. The, the issue, Monica, in authoritarian governments, force keeps people at home. In, in democracies, mm -hmm. is communication, confidence, and integrity. We have all seen Gambia quarantine. It has not worked as effectively as it has worked in some other places. And one of the reasons is nobody sees Barrow coming to talk to his people. The moment in the COVID-19, I'm like, Barrow disappeared into the state house and hide in a bunker for months, for almost a month before coming out and speaking to people. Mm. And since then, there has not been that rapport building with the people. Put one in it. Look, I am a good crisis manager. I am capable of dealing with this issue. Let me take center seat. I'm not a doctor, but I'll get the best experts to come and sit with me on a daily basis and reassure Gambians me. We're doing whatever it takes to make sure um, the, this, we fight this disease. Come we on. fight this pandemic. Trump. Trump is crazy, wow. but Fauzi is in a normal, on a normal setting, <laughs> In a normal setting, that's what you do. You get the experts to come in. You 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 you, you sit down and talk to people, and reassure Gambians. Women. Look, this is a disease that nobody has a cure for. It might be terrible. It might not be as bad as we all hope. But this is where we are right now. We don't know much information about it, so we must be very careful. And you see the boy, but how many times did you see Baro Murasibide Kabi? Or he was shown in photographs without a mask, and then you tell people this is serious. What well, example are you sending? The good thing is now that they put on masks be very well. The last time we never see Malo, we hung at the last time we saw him, his nose was out. And yeah. then when he was at the July 20th, the the Nakala to the Bakati Square, Bobusolo Nako very well. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you need to you need to inspire confidence in people. You're speaking a fatu. If you were telling me that you want me to follow you to jump into a over a cliff, well, I have to have confidence in you. Mm -hmm. That when we jump, we all join the jump, and you're not going to uh, you're not going to retreat back. So in democratic societies, Lola, look at Boris. As crazy as he is, he's able to speak to the British people, uh, inspire confidence in the British people, and the British people are the most difficult people to control. But he has successfully quarantined the whole of the UK, not even to go out to the pub and drink a pint. At the weekend, which is something that happened five years ago, people were thinking they're not off. They until today, they were going to have a better and a guy talk on the break because because he communicates and he inspires confidence. He telling he's telling the British people, "Look, we're doing this in your best interest." Mm -hmm. Baro could not do that in Gambia. You could not even stop people from drinking attire. Let alone going to have quarantine union for how many months without the necessary um, economic support. It's not going to happen. Well, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. It's 7 11 here in uh, Eastern Time in Florida. I appreciate your time, both Madi and uh, Malik. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Fatu. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you very much. And, nice to meet you, Malik. Uh, good analysis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madi. Thank you, guys. So, when Mbokeyi, you know, he set on the level where he can do the club, he has to take the program being a hamne. You know, like in Delfini every uh, every Monday and Friday. So the program will be back again on uh, Monday in, uh, on Friday, inshallah. But uh, uh, the Lord Mayor, you know, in KMC and also in Banjul.
suba moy nek 2 years depuis bi biñ jele bi ngeen len sani le yeen gambie bi ba ngeen len dugal ci office bi lolu tamit is very important pour ñu wax ko su fekkon ne tay la ni ko non nañ len doon jema try am len ñom ñep ñu indi len ay noné di lord mayor of banjul rugi malik lo am na office am defal nañ ben newsletter bo hamne is up to 12 pages i'm sure it's going to be out uh, tomorrow uh, so do, for those of you who want to know everything that's going on at the uh, at the banjo city council you will have the opportunity to read all of that and on there you will find a message bo hamne bu mayor bi la mu ngi wax ne as we observe the second year and therefore the middle of our term uh, at the banjo city council i would like to first thank the people of banjo for the trust bestowed in me and my team uh, for the past two years uh, so mayor bi modern it was uh, and still remains a privilege and an honor uh, that uh, they took over they, they took this very seriously and more which uh, we will continue to strive to fulfill the best of the abilities uh, so subangen trangen amli is very interesting it's a long one however reflecting on the two years i personally uh, feel my expectations are a little bit higher uh, than we have achieved but i'm happy that uh, it was not because of lack of trying and mudem the one i had taken a vow uh, to deliver on our manifesto and as much as i can look back as uh, some solid tangible achievements i would think we could have done better uh, as i am not only uh, who gets uh, easily satisfied so the lord mayor of uh, banjul this is part of the uh, uh, her statement a message that uh, she has on the uh, on the newsletter that will be out tomorrow it's a long message and uh, right now nyom malik ak nyom madi wax wax lo dañ ma be sona na why message be will be out tomorrow is very interesting i think if you can grab a copy of the newsletter i'm not sure what the kmc is doing i haven't spoken to them uh why nyom banjul gene in the newsletter so kon di le wax rek ne yeen ñep jere jeff fum ne dok mu ngay jot ci fi di le wax ne program bi inshallah dina ñew every monday and every friday te liñ fi wax rek moy lepp lo xamne moy yobbu gambie nam di contact nañ tay gay government official ci way mënuñ wona ñew ci bi way jox nañ ñu seen word nañ ñu suñ paré rek e hina friday dina ñu call su ko defé ñom itam dina ñew fi ñu dégg seen site programme bi dañ ko bëggay yaatal dal di invite ñeneen ño xamne duñ rek ñi nga xamne politique lañ nekk way ñi nga xamne ño nekk di movers and the shakers in the country ndax gambia la wala america la wala angleterre la kep ko xamne amna lu muy bu ga share ak nit ñi nit ñi jangé ci wala mu nekk lo xamne suñu affaire dikk la do not hesitate to come out here and talk to us di len wax rek ni affaire dikk bi affaire dikk bi la su affaire dikk ñëwé na politique randu na lepp randu ñu ñëpp ñu jital dikk bi parce que dikk bi moy fi nga xamne ñun fofu lañ dikk moy gambie so judo dañ la jox tour be paré ak fi nga joggé sa dikk lolu moy ñi kaño bala ñuy laacé mom ban parti la nekk so lolu yeb da fay ñew last election bi ñëwé ñu jog election waye fuñ tollu ni affaire dikk bi mo wara ñor every gambian ñep and ci affaire dikk bi ñu daldi dox lolu woto mba di ngol kom nga fa ñaame be jamano men ko no sai sai teng pandemic la be kering mais alon ka be duniya karo belo to man sa kundal wo bankol wo e be nata ñu kan ne kay ka je ko kañu ko wakele ñu la parce que na ba ta duniya ko no drong isa je kairo sina du la ye yele ko won ñenta kala ñama be muru ñama woto sai te manke politique time woto fe mo fe yalon ko wala mu gambe koti ntolu be ci gambe jital nga gambe ke ñaato nga gambe ko discourse nim pare ta wala ni election aussi da politico mo be ci tela karale te dun ta daawo day be daawo day ta jeent la carte o fele na bago kono ni wo time aussi tan sen na carte o bondi nda fana me alon ko wala ñia fa nsa fay wo mari wo to mba falal tol be yalla baraka mol men be ji be kala baraka yeen nu ngeen xamne yen mom awma luma len fe yen suñ ne fatu rek ngeen jog du ngeen nelaw every time di ngeen call di ma set fuñ ma tudda ngeen jog di len wax jere jeuf yen na len yalla fe yalla mo amé fe yen na len fe yalla fe len sen xol di len wax ne man limay liggey dikk bi la liggeyal te su nexé ak yalla liggey bi dafa continuer euh xana yalla bañ waye su dud lolu liggey bi na continuer lolu bu len ci am ben ñaar xel yen bi de laccé di len wax ne dikk bi ñun ñep ñoko mom ñi dañu ñi fuur lañ amé dañuy def dañuy bek nguru mo am ño xamne ñom restaurant lañ am dañuy toga nit ñi lekk mo am ño xamne ñom bi moy seen wax moy moy seen liggey moy wax duñuy wax ku kuy wodo lamen bu nopé rafle di len assurer rek ne len li moy suma liggey te inshallah man dina continuer di wax 
jeedu len jeuf yeen ñep ñom ali oustad ñom dal so suma xalé bi ñom amina yeen ñep munuma len fétu da fatima fatima ndeysan mom dama ko follow facebook ba nga xamna fum nekk ni dama ko dé xol fum dem ñu block ko fum dem wax fa suma tour ñu block ko di len wax ma ngi len di bayyi xel yeen ñep di len némé ku di len sétane de gis yeb li ngeen di def ñi nga xamna tam ñoy dañ bëgga def fatu xalé li fatu group bi yeen jox na len permission mën ngeen continuer ngeen def ko fa ci kèn momut bopam te su dé lolu ngeen bëgga li ngeen bëgga lolu lay def ngir yalla ak yeen so gisé ñu né fatu camera so gisé fuma ag ma mëna tok wax yalla ak yeen la kon ma ngeen di wax jëri jëf suma anti bi mama sali sali yeen ñep jëri len jëf yeen ñep ñuma fi tudda ñuma fi muntu tudda mënu ma rimem ba yeb kuma né fatu dal jox nañ taxaw jëri len jëf yeen ñep yeen na len yalla fay thank you